welcome back to Building on a Budget Models. Today we're going to do the final assembly of Fernando Alonso's Renault R23 Formula One car by Ravel. I start by setting out all the pieces. This is mainly to make sure that I have everything and that I don't miss anything whilst assembling. It's very easy to get ahead of yourself and to put in a part which will stop another part from being added. So you need to be careful at this point. I'd like to add that I've deviated from the instructions. Many of these parts should have already been glued together, but because I wanted to do this final assembly video, that's the reason I'm putting it together now. I had given the car a couple of coats of clear gloss after finishing the decals and then put it to rest for a couple of days under a plastic box so as to not get dust or hairs on it. Here I'm looking for any patches that I may have missed or scratched. I did a test fit with this before affixing it using Tamiya extra thin cement. Important to make sure that it's central. I've glued the small clear wind visor in and next I'm looking to put the seat into place. Because I've already put in the floor of the nose, there is a small tab that stops the seat from going in. So I remove that with clippers and then use the end of a paintbrush to help wedge it in place. Then my super glue pen fixes it in place. I'm pretty happy with that. I choose to fit the engine directly into the bodywork, as the snorkel and exhausts are a bit fiddly. There is no steering function in this model, so I use super glue with the wheel axles at the front to make sure that they are firmly in place. I carefully use a toothpick to find the holes where the suspension arms fit and poke through the yellow decals. I fit these into place and then glue them from the underside. Front suspension on these Formula One models can be quite difficult and fiddly, but this one wasn't too bad. Next I try to find where the TV camera for the front wing goes, however there doesn't seem to be a hole for it, so I choose to just leave it off instead. Then I do a test fit of the body before applying more super glue carefully so as to not ruin the paint or decals.
I used some 400 grit sandpaper to give the tires a little bit of a rub, giving them a little bit of a worn look. Fortunately, there were no mold lines on them, so I didn't have to worry about that. Whilst the instructions say that the wheels just click on, the suspension can be a little weak on these Formula One cars, so therefore a bit of extra care is needed when putting the wheels in place. The front wing fit very nicely and was just glued on with a little bit of super glue. Again, I was using a toothpick just to open up the holes for where the barge boards clip into the front nose section. The rear of them go just underneath the floor, so after testing, a little bit of glue could be attached to both places and they fitted very nicely. The next thing I added were the aerodynamic flaps on the bodywork. I gave a little test fit before gluing them in place and a little adjustment was needed to some of the tabs before they fit into the slots. The last thing that needed to be added were the aerials to the nose cone. Just like before, I used a toothpick to make some of the holes through the decals. The yellow one went in with no glue at all, and the black one needed a little bit of glue. I chose not to do the aerial closest to the driver as it wasn't used during the Hungarian Grand Prix. And here's some final shots of the finished model. I enjoyed building this car and I hope you liked watching it too. Please comment, like, share and subscribe and I'll see you soon.